Hello and welcome to our Pentecost service for St Clement's Nayland and St Tidwell's Land Sadwell in Pembrokeshire. It's lovely that you're watching and we had a great time in worship uh, this morning and this is for uh, the YouTube during the week. It's a, a communion, Pentecost, we try and take communion. We can't of course do it properly but it is a spiritual communion, this service, that opportunity to receive all that the Lord Jesus has to give us. If it helps you to have a bit of bread and a bit of juice or wine, then by all means do that. But um, it's not necessary. God gives of his grace and out of his love and we can receive all the benefits that he has. So I'm just going to say a prayer and then we'll watch a, a, a video of amazing grace in 50 different languages. Father God, thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Move in our hearts that we might know you more fully, know your love and know that we are safe with you for eternity. Amen.
so much has changed in our world lately. 疫情中这么多人失去生命，显明了生命的脆弱与短暂。Pero la asombrosa gracia y amor de Jesús es más fuerte que la vida y la muerte. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. 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 Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jesus. Don't wait another day. Acts two, one to twenty-one. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. As the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, "Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language?" Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another. What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, "They have had too much wine." Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd: "Fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning." No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above. And signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Don't wait another day. So, wherever you are, in France or China or Spain or Mesopotamia or Judea or Cappadocia, Clansadwell or Nayland or Highborough, don't wait another day. There will be signs on the earth below. Peter is quoting the prophet Joel. Blood, fire, billows of smoke. The sun turned into darkness. The moon to blood, and we can understand this either literally as extraordinary natural phenomena, upheavals of nature, and we've had a few, uncontrollable, uncontrollable fire, torrential rain, floods, unparalleled sunshine, or we can understand it as metaphorical. Extraordinary shifts in world politics, upheavals of nations, once seemingly impregnably rich nations brought low and brought to a standstill. These things, the prophet said, will happen 
before the great and glorious day of the Lord. But in the meantime, in the interim, there's a period where God shouts a message of hope as the gospel is preached to all the nations and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So have you? Have you called on the name of the Lord? And for many who are watching now, the answer will be yes, and perhaps many years ago. And for you, I would just encourage you to call on him again. Open your life afresh to the filling of the Holy Spirit, a renewal of hope and joy and love and confidence. But for some, you might never have called on the name of the Lord before. Yes, to formal prayers, but never crying out, My Saviour, my Jesus, my Lord, my King. And there's a danger then of living in a time of uncertainty about what the future holds. Today, Pentecost is the birthday of the church. Make it your birthday too. And pray with me. Almighty God, I thank you for Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Thank you that on the cross Jesus took my guilt and my punishment. I leave behind the way of self and choose to follow Jesus and call on his name my Saviour and my King. And I open my heart and mind to the filling and refilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to worship and receive a spiritual communion as we offer ourselves in penitence and faith and giving thanks to God for the salvation that was won for us by Christ crucified. And as we receive all that God has for us. So let us reflect on this last week on relationships where we have fallen short where God hasn't been at the centre, in fact not even perhaps on the margins of our lives, when God hasn't been in the driving seat and in fact might not even have been a passenger. So let us confess our sins to the Father and seek his pardon and peace. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart and we have not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive us. Help us to amend our lives that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And hear the promise of God's forgiveness. May God our Father, who by our Lord Jesus Christ has reconciled the world to himself and forgives the sins of all who truly repent, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, and grant us the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. And so a moment's pause. As we receive Christ afresh into our hearts, if you have some bread, if it helps you, take a little bit and eat. If you've got a little bit of wine or juice, take a little bit and drink. And say to Jesus, you want to receive everything that he has to give you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with me today as I offer myself to you. Hear my prayers for others and for myself and keep me in your care. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. We bless you for our creation preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Love enough to cover
Heavenly Father, we pray that you would give us ears to hear and minds to understand and hearts to obey. Amen. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and life was changed. They were changed and the church exploded. Two things happened immediately. One was supernatural. They were given the ability to declare the wonders of God in different languages. You see, there were people from around the Mediterranean, around the whole Roman Empire, Jews who had come for the Feast of Pentecost 50 days after Passover, and they found in Jerusalem that there was this bunch of men from Galilee who they could understand because they were speaking their language. A supernatural work of God. But secondly, natural gifts were released in a new way and with new power and new effect. You see, the apostles had some sort of preaching experience already, and Peter certainly was a, a natural leader. But uh, here, uh, that was given a whole new dimension. Instead of just a few people, there were thousands gathering around. 3,000 came to a living faith, and it was a bunch of northerners, complete with their accents in the heart of the establishment in Jerusalem, that made the difference completely new experience. Supernatural gifts, natural gifts released. And the result was people gathering, a, a, a new openness to the preaching, barriers broken down between uh, the different nationalities, as well as amazement and perplexity and criticism. And my friends, we need that work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church today, if the church is to be anything other than small and insignificant. The Holy Spirit came in power. But the problem is we cannot control the Spirit. Jesus, in speaking to Nicodemus, said exactly that. The wind blows where it wills. We can't say come here or go there to the Holy Spirit. But what can we do? Well, it seems to me that there were a number of conditions that the apostles made sure were right. Firstly, they had a conviction as to who Jesus was, the Messiah, the Son of God, crucified and risen. I think they also had a heart that was set on obeying whatever Jesus commanded to go and make disciples, to be witnesses to the ends of the earth. But thirdly, also, they were together. We tend to jump to the end of chapter 2 after Pentecost for that description of the early church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. But actually, they were pretty devoted before Pentecost as well. Verse 14 of chapter 1, they joined together constantly in prayer, constantly in prayer together. And at the beginning of chapter 2, they were together. The unity of the body of Christ is a place where the Holy Spirit is more likely to work in power. So what? Well, firstly, I would suggest we need to sort out where we stand with Jesus Christ. We need to know him as Son of God, as Saviour and King. And if that's not where you are with Jesus, I just invite you to join us on the Alpha course we're going to start in a couple of weeks' time. Get in touch with me to find out more about it. Sort out where you stand with Jesus. Secondly, we might need to sort out where we stand with some other people. Disunity is going to limit the effect of the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. We might need to get on the phone or to get on our knees. But thirdly, we need to ask for more. Did the disciples have the Holy Spirit already? Answer, yes. John chapter 20, 
in the upper room that first Easter evening, Jesus appeared and he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. The disciples had the Holy Spirit already. But there was something more that they needed. We need to ask God for more. Some 30 years ago, there was a uh, worship song which included the refrain, more love, more power, more of you in my life talking to Jesus or the Holy Spirit. More love, more power, more of you in my life. And I can remember Jesus telling me that that had been banned by the Christian Union in Durham University. Uh, and the idea was this, that it's theologically incorrect. You cannot have a bit of God and another bit of God and a bit more then of God. You either have God in your life or you haven't. Now, it might be theologically incorrect, but emotionally, I think it is spot on. And it should be the Christian's prayer for more. God, be more at work in my life. God, be at work more in all of my life. Going on a walk uh, yesterday evening, going through the stiles and the gates between the fields, those separated off areas. And I was thinking of the separated off areas in our lives. We allow the spirit into certain parts, but not into all. We need more. That wonderful hymn, Oh, for a closer walk with God. That should be the constant prayer of the Christian. You think of two magnets and there's an attraction between them. The closer they are, they don't suddenly lose that attraction. The, the, the feeling of attraction is stronger. The stronger you are, the greater the desire to be closer still. Where it comes to our walk with Jesus Christ, a prayer for more. And lastly, I'd like to suggest we need to stop making excuses. When the Holy Spirit came on the Apostles, Life was changed. They were changed. And some people say, no, I'm happy as I am. We cannot say that as Christians. If God wants to give us something, it's going to be a good gift. We can't put up the shutters. I don't understand. And that's no excuse. I don't understand love, but it didn't stop me falling in love. I don't understand Zoom, but it doesn't stop me using it for our Sunday worship. I'm too old, too young. Something's not. The Holy Spirit was poured out on all people. Peter quoting Joel, sons and daughters, old men, young men, age, gender. It's not a barrier. And lastly, past failure. Past failure is no barrier to the Holy Spirit being at work in your life. Simon Barrington Ward, um, one time director of CMS and Bishop of Coventry, died in April. And there were a few memories from different people in the Church Times. And there was a Reverend Stuart Fife in last week's Church Times who said this. Some years later, he, Simon Barrington Ward, was responsible for saving my ministry. After an indiscretion in my curacy, I was on the verge of accepting a position back at my old law firm when Simon and Jean came for a visit. When I told him that my shame prohibited me from ever again putting on the robes of priesthood, he replied simply, My dear boy, why do you think they give us the robes? We all need covering. We all need covering and you can't really minister until you know that deeply no excuses the message of pentecost the church enlivened and empowered we need to get jesus right we need to have that heart to obey. We need to have a measure of unity. We need to ask for more. And God will bless us. And we've got to stop making excuses. 
Father God, we pray for the Spirit to be more at work in our lives and in your church. Amen. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare your living hope. Your presence. Pray for families. We thank you for our families and pray for their protection from coronavirus, especially those who may be particularly vulnerable. We pray that God will comfort those around the world who are grieving the loss of loved ones, and for those feeling isolated or lonely by being in lockdown. We pray for Tear Fund and other aid organisations providing food, financial aid and emotional support to people whose circumstances already fragile. We pray too for those living without family just now, disconnected and missing those they love. We pray for parents under pressure juggling homeschooling, work and home life. We ask you to strengthen marriages amid this extra stress. May we in your power offer a spirit of joy, love, peace, harmony, patience and forgiveness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Prayers for the health service. We thank you for the health care we enjoy in this country and ask for your mercy on those in places with much less. We pray for the hands of NHS workers to bring healing and wholeness to body and mind. Lord, we pray for each frontline staff worker to protect them from the virus, for wisdom as they care and for stamina as they face new challenges. We pray too for those undergoing or waiting for other treatments during this time. 
Lord, have mercy. In Jesus' name, Amen. We pray a blessing over care homes and nursing homes that bring help and community to the vulnerable as the virus strikes hardest here. We pray for all who work in this area and ask for your strength, energy and protection as they bring the caring touch. We pray for the elderly, disconnected from loved ones. May they know your presence, love and protection. Help us to care for those near to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. We pray for government and society. We pray for wisdom for Prime Minister Boris Johnson, the Cabinet and senior civil servants, as they decide how best to halt the spread of coronavirus in the UK while also protecting jobs. We pray for wisdom and support for governments of developing nations who are not able to provide safety nets to their people because of a lack of resources and fragile infrastructures. We pray for God's protection for people living in refugee camps, such as the half a million Rohingya people in the world's biggest refugee camp in Bangladesh. We pray for wisdom for leaders of these camps. In Jesus' name, Amen. Prayers for the Church. We pray for God's blessing on our church in this season, that community will be strengthened despite the inability to gather, and for wisdom for Alan and John in their leadership. We pray for churches here and around the world to be the hands and feet of Jesus during this pandemic, in both prayer and action. We pray for those known personally to us, family or friends, who have been affected by loneliness, anxiety, sickness or bereavement. May they know the love, peace and strength of God today. In Jesus' name, Amen. And finally, as we celebrate the gift of your Holy Spirit, the Collect for the Day of Pentecost. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire, strengthen your children with the gift of faith, Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join in the second collect together. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely trusting in your protection may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, we thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this new day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger, and enable us in everything to do only what is right in your eyes, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And before a blessing, let me just say thank you for joining us for this service, wherever you are and whatever time of day it might be. Join us again next week. If God has been speaking to you, if you'd like to be in touch about anything, if there's something you'd like me to pray for for you, or if you'd like to be part of our Alpha course, do get in touch with me, Alan Chadwick, 01646 600 227, 600 227, or message us through the Facebook page, St Clements and Clanstadwell Churches. You'll find a way. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you and those whom you love, this day and always. Amen. <laughs>